Ready? Ready. Ready. Hi, welcome to Event Ready Podcast, where we talk about a roller coaster ride of being a live event artist. If you're a painter, calligrapher, or illustrator, this podcast is for you. Because we're about to uncover the secrets, the stories, and the struggles of the industry. This is your host, Michelle. And I'm Talisa. And I'm Isabel. I love that you're like our human jingle. I know. <laughs> uh, we are now entering season two of the Event Ready podcast. Woo. Uh, yeah, so excited. And we have Isabel join us permanently. <gasps> Yay! So excited! Yay! Welcome back, Isabel. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy that I'm now officially part of the cast. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, we are so excited because Isabel has a lot of um knowledge as well and experience that we can share to the world. Um, you know, as live event artists um in Vancouver. And you're doing everything too, like calligraphy, engraving, bottle painting, illustration. So like, you know, the more of us, the more knowledge to spread. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's, it's a lot. And sometimes it's really overwhelming, but yeah. it's really nice to like always come back to come back to the friend group and just like <laughs> hash everything out and like feel recentered, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and this is this is why why we do what we do. We're just spilling the tea. And we got lots yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Michelle, do you want to introduce our first topic of season two? Yes. So today's topic, we have so many and can't wait to get into it. But today's topic, we kind of wanted to like reset everything kind of go back to the beginning a little bit so Mm -hmm. the topic of today is did you go to art school (laughs) so this is this is interesting Mm -hmm. because like I feel like uh, most of us we get asked this question a lot Mm -hmm. right you guys get these questions a lot too like all the time like did you go to art school Mm -hmm. typically it's (laughs) the first question you get Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah it's like the icebreaker Mm -hmm. that you get you know, they just want to get to know you. And so I thought that's an interesting way to like, you know, <laughs> we start this podcast, kind of uh, explain what uh, did, did we go to art school or not? And um, I thought it's like, it's going to be fun uh, topic. Um, So I didn't go to art school. <laughs> Neither did I. Neither did I. Nobody so- did. <laughs> 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 so we didn't go to art school, but um, our true passion of love for art um, and paired with the uh, background of education uh, that we did um, really help. Um, it could also like whatever it, this might also happen to you as well. You might not have gone to art school and you might have gone to uh, you might have studied something else, but we feel that whatever your education is paired with your passion for love of art um, can really help you in your journey as a live event artist. Um, Mm -hmm. So essentially your, your own art school. And we're going to talk about each of our experiences, each of our uh, background and how we came into becoming a live event artist and how we, how we, how we basically transition ourselves to become um to become a, a live event artist. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I love how you said that. Because <laughs> I think like I think for all of us, we kind of happened upon this maybe like a little bit by accident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we the art part is not the accident, but the work part was the accident, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. No, no, for sure. Yeah. So so who wants to share first? Uh, Michelle, do you want to start? What What did you study in school? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, in school. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I really wanted to go to art school. Like I told my parents that I had a art school in California all picked out mentally. 
And um, they said something to me that kind of like it stuck with me and it made me change my whole outlook on this. They they basically asked me, how are you going to make money? And I was, <laughs> I felt so hurt. I was like, okay, now I have to choose something. So I chose nursing as my mm-hmm. um, profession and that's what I went to school for. So I did a um, few years at a local college here. And then after that, I got hired into a hospital locally. So Mm -hmm. all of my knowledge is medical stuff. But while I was doing that, a lot of the time I spent, you know, still painting, um, learning calligraphy, which came uh, my first year as a nurse. That's when I started learning. I learned it for my wedding so that I can address the envelopes and place cards. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They weren't pretty or anything, but that was the start. Um, I also did my own uh, welcome sign for the wedding. Mm -hmm. I still have it. It's hiding in the attic. But (laughs) So you hired yourself first. I hired myself first. Actually, it was a weird coincidence because um, I had three months to plan my wedding. I do everything super last minute. I don't know why I do this, but there wasn't enough time to hire a calligrapher. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to learn so I can have it done already. And so I, I I taught myself essentially. And Mm -hmm. I think this was a time where it was kind of cool to say like I was self-taught. And so Mm -hmm. I learned that and um, it came out, it came out okay. Uh, But all of my coworkers after that were asking, can you do this for my wedding? Can you do this? Can we, can we um, have your product? And I'm like, okay, maybe I need to start a business now. Yeah. That's kind of where it went. (laughs) And then um, most of Juniper Calligraphy was started selling um, wooden signs in a local shop here. Um, I made these cute signs that say like aloha or please take off your shoes just something small that people can put in their house Mm -hmm. and um that's where it started so I was doing my calligraphy on those um, pieces of wood plus doing a little bit of painting on it so I that's where it all started like these wooden signs um and then yeah I don't I don't want to go too deep into it but yeah (laughs) yeah yeah I do not. No, that's like that's so interesting because it's so different from what you do now. Like, uh, so so far away from from that like point in your business, even yeah. like it's evolved so much. I I do love it though. Like you've we've come so far and everything that we've done. It was a lot of trial and error, mm-hmm. but I still get to paint. Even yeah. though my name is Juniper Calligraphy, I feel like I do more painting today. <laughs> Juniper painting. <laughs> Juniper painting. <laughs> I gotta change my name. <laughs> but yeah. Um I don't wanna like go yeah, too far, so- but let's let's hear from you guys now. Isabel, what did you study in school? So I went to school for business and I um again just like Michelle I wanted to go to art school too um and I and I failed in my like PowerPoint presentation as to why I should go to art school I did not convince anybody so you created a presentation for that no I (laughs) I actually remember the conversation it was in my bedroom And I was on, I was at my desk and my mom was in my bed and I was like trying to sell her, I sell her this idea. I'm like, well, I kind of like want to do this and I want to do that. And my mom kind of said like, well, there are times where I I can't be your friend. I have to be your parent. (laughs) And this is where my idea got shut down. So, (laughs) so I went to school, um, for business. I had like, I had good grades in high school. So, um, getting into business school was kind of like, if you can get in, you should do it kind of thing. Right. Um, and so I went to, I went to business school and so that's where I got my bachelor degree in finance. Um, I almost double majored in information systems but then at some point I realized I was not smart enough to do computer science courses across the board um I was like you've completely lost me I can't continue with this line (laughs) (laughs) so that's what I did um and then coming out of school I had um and even during school I had like summer internships 
with um, like a venture capital company, um, a, a government bank and uh, com- came right out of school and did like finance jobs always. Mm-hmm. And then I just hopped around different firms. And now I, maybe this is a little known fact, but I still have a full-time job in yeah. wealth um, and investment management. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I learn my, or learn. That's how I earn <laughs> my, uh, my principal living is still what I studied. That's awesome that you still do both. Yeah. 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 Like you're juggling both. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're using both sides of your brain. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. Like, and like, I was always um, like a a bit of like a math nerd anyway in school. Like I, I still really enjoy um, my job in that sense. Like I like being good with numbers. I like um, helping clients with that side because people can be, you know, can need a, need a lot of financial advice and so like it just like war- exercises a part of like my knowledge and my brain in that way which is like satisfying too in and of itself mm-hmm. yeah no we, we need that yeah and plus that's, that's actually yeah that's like the whole thing of this podcast like if you love something and you enjoy it then mm-hmm. continue it right for sure yes yeah Talisa, what about you? Um, so like all of you, I wanted to go to art school <laughs> and um, also got shut down by my parents. But um, behind their back, I actually did try to apply <laughs> for <laughs> not art school. It was for interior design and architecture without telling my parents. So I actually had a whole portfolio interview and everything. And I did get accepted. And I told my parents, still got shut down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god she's like nope you're going to um you're going to uh you're going to UFD so I went to University of Toronto um obviously UFD does not have a great arts you know <laughs> program but um so I I uh I study sociology and geography um but I also took some art classes that they had. So I took all their art classes. I took the visual art and uh, like, you know, art history and everything. Um, just because I wanted to keep in touch, to stay in touch with the uh, artistic side of me and learn yeah. about, uh, learn all those, you know, fine arts history and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I still took them. My parents didn't know. <laughs> That's and, so smart. Um, I, I did that. Oh, my God. <laughs> and... <laughs> Um, so obviously I still do art on the side and 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 in doing stuff and then I and then I and then I continued education um, and I studied HR so technically it was kind of like business schools but it's mostly focused on HR yeah um, and I obviously still at home I'm still doing art on the side always it just never stopped like I always have to have a sketchbook with me and um, and then I. And then I graduated and I, um, before actually when I graduated, I actually gave birth <laughs> and, um, and I stay home, obviously it didn't work. And, and I was doing a lot of art when I was at home. And then I, and then I finally started working as an HR generalist. So generalist, like, um, so in HR, there's like so many different umbrellas. There's like training development, you know, um, rewards and recognition. But, and I was a generalist, so I pretty much did everything. So um, I I guess um, at one point um, we um, had to do a uh, um, assessment like a operate um, our how you operate and then I the the um, the result that I got was very different from my team. My result was very much alike like the marketing team. So they oh. were like. Oh, I should belong here. <laughs> Time to consider right? a career move. But <laughs> that was like, I think that was like a huge, like, you know, like, like a wake up call to me. Like, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And then the thing is that when I had my interview with my boss there, they asked me one question. What's one thing that's not on your resume? And I told them I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And then ever since then, like, there's like, they always gave me projects with the marketing team 
because like I could so I could still be in touch with my artistic side of myself. So so like um so I did a lot of like some graphic stuff, um some graphic design stuff. They but... were smart to use you. Right? I hope they know <laughs> that like they may have taken advantage of that. I know. Bit. I think I now I realize that I'm, I might have been taking advantage of it. <laughs> so like you know um so as an, a generalist like you know that's like it's like a lot of juggling and whatnot right so I think at one point it was too stressful for me I really liked my job but I think it was just I I, I felt like it wasn't for me anymore um and it started to affect my mental health and I think um but I would never regret what I did now I am a full-time like I, mm. I left my corporate job and I was actually also in a financial wealth management company mm -hmm. um so I'm pretty familiar <laughs> with some yeah. yeah. I kind of remember that like when we first started talking, we yeah. we didn't like we spent a good amount of time like getting to know each other, like in yeah. our like, you know, one on one conversations. Mm -hmm. We were just like sharing the stuff that we had in common. And mm -hmm. I do remember that that like you were talking about brokerage and wealth management and how like it was yeah. just like so cutthroat and it's just like not the right place for you. Yeah. And, and, and like, because of the, I was in the corporate, um, yeah. it was just a lot of pressure. So there mm -hmm. was, it wasn't like entrepreneurial or anything, right. That like, so it's just like very like different and cutthroat and it was just too much. It was like, I decided to leave the job. Um, but, um, but I really love all the experience that I had from my job because I think mm -hmm. it really helped with what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. So yeah <laughs> the art side stuck with you yeah it the art side never left <laughs> it's funny you guys um like you both talked about how like the art you always stuck to it and you always like gravitated towards it and kept it up um it was kind of different for me and now like I, when I think back to it I still don't really know what happened but I took like a very long hiatus from art it was like maybe part of me just thought like okay if like a, a career in art wasn't gonna happen I like didn't even want to look at it or something like I just like shut it out so I just like I went to school I focused on school um and then coming out of school, it was like focused on getting the job and then getting the next job and then getting a better job. And then just kind of finally, um, when I got to a place where I was like financially like happy with my career and all that stuff. And then I like didn't have a at that point in time, um, I didn't have like the best uh, people that I was working with. It wasn't a good fit for me. And then I think it was at that time that just kind of prompted me to look elsewhere for, I don't know, some fulfillment outside of my job. And that's when I started looking at calligraphy as a hobby. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's like, that was my gateway. And I always like credit um, calligraphy for that like my gateway back to art yeah because I didn't like just start like randomly painting again or drawing or anything like that it was actually oh I I wanted to learn a new thing and then I started learning calligraphy and that was like what slowly got got me back into it yeah it's like uh, art I is your like safe safe place like yeah 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 it was your therapy yeah. It was my therapy. Yeah. And I would doodle at work. I mean, we've all done it, yeah. <laughs> you know, like doodle oh, at work, doodle on a phone call. Like it was just like what, what made me feel comfortable or like, like you said, it's like, it's like my best pacifier. <laughs> oh, <laughs> pacifier. Oh my God. <laughs> I like that. It's, it, uh, it does feel comfortable. Like when you're super stressed out, it's something that you can do to just relax or it uses because all of us had jobs that required the left side of our brain which is like very analytic <laughs> and numbers and all of that stuff we didn't really get to touch upon the creative side so yeah that side is like it you needed to scratch that itch in your brain like you it just nurture it, it didn't it, yeah it, it wasn't being nurtured yeah yeah 
I think there was definitely uh, some parts of my life where I didn't do it at all. Um, I think that was probably uh, like maybe the first three years of me working in the uh, corporate. I probably didn't do like actual like, you know, um, like painting and whatnot. I only did like iPad art. I don't know if it's the same, but there's still some creativity in it. But like, mm -hmm. it's obviously not as the same as what how much we do today. But um. But I think, um, I mean, we from the previous episode, we've talked about how we've been doing art for so long, like pretty much our whole life. Like it's always there. Um, yeah. It never really went away. But once you're back, it's just like it needed some time to get your muscle memory redeveloped again. And um, and same with you, like all of like we all started the business because of calligraphy. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm the crazy part but oh, we, <laughs> we found didn't... each other <laughs> I know it's so strange and yeah. how like calligraphy is almost like none of our main focus anymore <laughs> it was yeah it's so it's true so funny. it's yeah. still a big part obviously um it is but yeah it's 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 interesting that we can grow and evolve so much even though the foundations are quite similar mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and um so like we we had our career and whatnot or still have our career um but every single career has um you know skills that um are transferable to what you do today as a life event artist um whether it is i don't know communication or you know customer service and whatnot um michelle do you want to share any transferable transferable skills that you had as a nurse as a registered nurse that it's now beneficial to you as an event artist today uh I think so um I think a lot of it is like being disciplined mm -hmm. a lot of it um discipline a lot of respect um and then I think I can bring that part into the way that I practice art is something that I do consistently. Um, yeah. And I think also the professional side kind of translates to the business side and what I do now. Like if you're in the hospital, you want to take care of your patients as if they were your own family. And yeah. because I don't do that anymore, now I take care of my clients with the same respect so I think it works both ways on the skill side and the business side. Um, other than that, like I don't, I, I did love my job. I really did love nursing. Like I love learning about the body and all the physiology stuff. I really like seeing wounds and all that gross <laughs> that people find gross. I really, I really did like that. Um, they were just like you, Talisa, there were some parts that weren't as fun, like the politics side. Um, um, yeah. And that's what made me pull back a little bit, but it was such good training. And I don't think that I could have my business or maybe it would have taken longer if I didn't have all that training, like the professionalism, the discipline, it, maybe it would have taken longer for me to start this art business, but on the skill side, I don't know. I just, it's, it's something that I always loved. So I guess maybe I still would have done that. There's, there's two parts, right? When you do this business, yeah. it's the skill. And then it's also like the soft business skill. side, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to have both. Mm -hmm. so, I feel like this is like from an observation uh, point of view from me is like when I talk to you, Michelle, mm -hmm. um, you have like a calming presence. And I feel like that could be like attributable to your nursing background like I feel like you just have like that um like not panicking like very like don't freak out like we can deal with this like kind of demeanor where like you can just like be stay collected and like analyze and then like move forward instead of like you know a lot of a lot of us do the panicking thing let's be honest like <laughs> like panic buying <laughs> <laughs> panic on site panic yeah. before job panic 
on like all fronts, but like for, for you, like being friends with you and like watching you like carry yourself through your business. I feel like you're just like very centered and like, you don't freak out about stuff. Oh, thank you. You know what? It's so funny that you say that because I was thinking like, where did that even come from? Um, first of all, I don't, maybe I don't have a lot of energy to begin with. Like I drink coffee to be awake, (laughs) but I think it's from nursing. Like you deal with life and death, like truly like emergency situations. And in that situation, you cannot freak out. You cannot lose yourself or else, you know, some bad things will happen. So Mm -hmm. I think I sort of internalize it and I'm like, okay, it's life. So you just deal with it. Every problem that comes, just deal with it. Everything is, what what is, figure outable. Figure outable. (laughs) You can, you can find a way for everything. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's where it comes from, but you know, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely like a, a like a beneficial s- s- soft skills that you use in the live event because at a live event, yeah, like what you guys said, it's like there's always some shocking things or like something that's unexpected, and you know how to deal with that in a calm matter and professional. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, like yeah. so much internal screaming when like something goes wrong or like, oh, can you do <laughs> oh, that God. instead? Or like, oh, actually, oh, that's the wrong bottle or whatever. Like yeah. something will uh, always go like mm-hmm. not according to plan. And yeah. it's like very important that it doesn't show on your face, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> that is true. I've actually spilled the sealer, um, you know, the deco art. Dura clear sealer spilled it all over a clear table and <gasps> sealed it well. <laughs> and that was in a store, very white, pristine, everything. And I'm over there like, oh, I hope nobody can see me. <laughs> see you scraping it up. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> screaming inside. But yeah. Yeah, screaming inside, but Can't remaining calm. <laughs> mm-hmm, trying to be. <laughs> what about you, Isabel? What's your transferable skills? I think the main thing is like customer service for me Um, and like not being afraid of the business side of our work. That's probably the two biggest things. Like um, I I deal with clients um, like one-on-one. We we have private clients in, in my line of work. Um, we serve the same, same clients over and over. Anytime they have some issue or they have a question or they have money coming in or out, um, they come to us. And so, you know, like dealing with customers, I wouldn't say that it's... Um, applicable as far as like us dealing with our clients for um for for live events but it's the um the guests like the customers that buy the product or that are receiving our service like that's when I find I'm utilizing that skill because like generally speaking like I'm very introverted (laughs) so being on site like I do have to put on like my client facing face and like be like talkative and be outgoing and like want to talk about myself but otherwise like if I'm just socializing at a party like I'm standing by the food and I'm not talking to anybody you know (laughs) like Mm -hmm. um so that like that helps to like have that like client facing um like front and be able to engage and interact and and do the job um and then so the other part I said was like not being afraid of the business or the number side of the job like a lot of our conversations as entrepreneurs happen around like pricing or like what app do I use for what um to track my expenses or like to do um the CRM or that kind of stuff um I just like never saw that as a problem or like a a hurdle. I'm like, oh, I'll find a thing and then I'll invoice and I'll do this. And I have no problem, you know, Googling a tax issue that I don't know because that's what I do on a daily basis is researching tax stuff or, you know, um, 
like that stuff has never like scared me off. Whereas I know that's like very intimidating if you don't have that kind of background to, to like, Oh my God, like, how do I manage my like business income and expenses? How do I report that? Or how do I, like, I fully appreciate that that's a big kind of hurdle for a lot of people and understandably so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. I agree with that. I that's wouldn't have been able to tell that you're introverted like <laughs> hanging out with you like you're like the life of the party like you <laughs> <laughs> or at least when we were hanging out <laughs> what no but you know why Michelle it's because it was a small group mm. like if if the group is bigger than like five people I no longer function I'm just like oh I can't <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just not here. Like you guys have the conversation. I'm gonna get some popcorn. <laughs> I just, I just stop functioning. But in small groups that, like, with people I trust, like you guys, like I can talk for three hours, right? Like, um, it's a totally different dynamic. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm no, I, I like that you off to the. Sorry. Yeah, I like to share about the whole business um minded stuff because it's the same with me. Um coming from the business um world, it's very familiar. Um so coming in to this space, I already knew that I wanted to have a CRM, I wanted to have a system that makes my life easy. Um I am comfortable building a website because in my job, I had to build a whole freaking portal for the employees so mm -hmm. it was a lot more complicated um because i was part of the development team and um and then building a website for my own portfolio it's like it's a peanut for me and <laughs> especially when like you know the, the website it's like just template and whatnot um and i work a lot with the marketing team so i like i was very familiar with the like marketing mm -hmm. communication and whatnot and part of my job is that because I'm a very front facing um, <laughs> with employees, um, I I had to be in a Toastmasters, which is a public speaking club. Um, so mm -hmm. being in a public speaking club, I was trained to be able to think on your feet, speak on your feet, being able to talk in front of people comfortably. Um, and all that so I'm very comfortable doing all of that um and um and also like you know email communication it's like <laughs> I have to do that that's like my daily job being able to communicate everything to employees yeah. to get a buy-in and whatnot um you know being able to um communicate professionally and whatnot um so I think and effectively <laughs> and effectively <laughs> like don't you find that like a lot of conversations in the community also circle around like how do I say this to a client or like how do I let this person know this and it's like um like thank goodness that we do have a lot of experience writing like tough emails or like stuff that yeah. isn't just like E easy as you're not just saying greetings this and that like it's not always happy emails sometimes mm -hmm. it's tough emails um and and like negotiating with a client like that is some yeah. some stuff that's like nobody anticipates yeah for sure and I, I've had to like educate new clients sometimes you know like oh you know this is this is what I'm charging and, and, you know, like stuff like that. And then they were willing to up their budgets to so much because I know how to communicate mm -hmm. and, um, um, and, um, you know, I think, I think that having that good communication verbally as well as, you know, I, sometimes we have like meetings, virtual meetings and um, whatnot. I can, you know, maintain, I can really um, understand. I can basically mirror how they are for them to like me um by just having a five second conversation line I know how my tone is going to be like and I think that is more like relationship management um I think that's I feel like not only that you know you only have the skills I know how to maintain relationship with my clients and I've been working with them for so many years um and I think it's because I know how to maintain that 
because I've been doing that for um in the HR from my background <laughs> yeah I was yeah I was just gonna say like that's an HR thing for sure like the psychology of humans and the psychology of like organizations and like how management structures are built like that's totally that's mm-hmm. like your forte is like relationship management right? yeah, yeah exactly so it wasn't just like firing and hiring but it's like it was more <laughs> yeah. about like relationship yeah. management and, and like, like connecting yeah. with employees too like you said you're having meetings with them um yeah like connecting with them on a human level where they can relate to you and vice versa. Yeah. So I think that's where <clears throat> the transferable skills, um, you know, from the business point, I think that is really helpful in my journey as an artist. You just know how to read the room all the time. <laughs> and also organization. Like yeah. I need to be organized. Like, with oh, my- yeah. Yeah. Like my folder is very organized. My portfolio is organized within like bottle painting, perfume painting, handle engraving, the type of illustration, <laughs> the different. <laughs> I, like, I remember when, I, when we were building the FBPA course, you were the organization person. Like you did all the files and everything. And I just come in like, I have this idea, this, this, this. And you're like, okay let's start from the beginning and make it organized. And you were so good with that. And and I remember asking like, how did you get so organized? And you were like, well, my job trained us to do this. And it just stuck. And everything's so nice. Like our, I like looking at our file still looks good. Yeah. It just helps. (laughs) And that's, that's such a Talisa characteristic because when you like um, and when there's like something new that comes up or that we're like dissecting a problem or we're talking through, uh, like anything, Talisa is always the first one to be like, we need a process. <laughs> how do I, yes. how do I make this process better? Yep. And the T system for this podcast, <laughs> guess who thought of that? <laughs> and the bullet points that we're looking at. That's all. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh. I'm less good at like that type of organization, but time management now you just like you just thought made me think of it like time management is like very crucial um, in my in my day job. Um, so like I work with stock market hours and I live on the West Coast, which is not stock market like, you know, so we're we're three hours behind. Um, and so it's kind of like a like a rush. Um, to get things done before market close, which is at 1 p.m. West Coast time. Um, and anything that happens after that is like basically moot. It's just next day. Um, so like typically if there's like a high volume or something, I'm like, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then like a client calls and then I'm like, oh, do I work on this client first or do I do the thing that I was working on? And then you're just like constantly juggling like multiple things and emails coming in and just like that the world I feel like is like the type of chaos that we get on site. You know, where like you have like three things lined up and then the sales comes over and is like, can you make this one first? And then like this one for that person. And you've got like now 50 post-its on your table and you don't know which one is first. Like it's very similar to like that feeling where you're just trying to manage things, uh, organize your space um, and managing your time correctly. Like, oh, I still have half an hour left. Can I get this, this one and that one and that one done? Um, in order for you to even respond back to the associate, like, yes, I can do one more. Like, to do all that math. <laughs> you compute everything in your head. Compute, like, yeah. <laughs> You're multitasking <laughs> in your mind. That's what it is. Yeah. You it's- just reminded me of something. Um, uh, for nursing, when we come in to work in the morning and we get our patient set, the, we have to prioritize, like, I like to think about it, who would potentially, I don't want to say it, like, something bad would happen to them first, like, who is the most critical, and that's how yeah. you prioritize yeah. everything, Yeah. and then yeah, that comes sense. into, like, what you were saying, Isabel, like, on site, like, okay, do I have time to do this guy, or which guy do I have to see first, and then you prioritize from there, or, like, can I squeeze this in before I have to leave, um, and then that pri- that comes into play with like, okay, can I engrave this before I have to leave? Like, do you have enough time? So 
you you reminded me of that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> like internal and uh, some anxiety from that. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and it feels like we've all had experience with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like an everyday experience. And and also like when you're engraving and painting, it's like you recalibrate your brain, switch it up all the time, right? So it's like it's a whole other different piece of multitasking <laughs> and so our backgrounds kind of help getting into that yeah we kind of got used mm-hmm. to it yeah yeah mm. so, so it's it's I, I find that like most of us um not just the three of us like most of us in general the calligraphers the artist community um we started doing this in getting into the art um, business as a secondary. Like, we've had our first job before. Like, most of us didn't expect this to be a business. Like, you like an accidental kind of thing. For sure. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and I find that so interesting because um, I don't know how it became kind of very relatable to everyone that how do we ended up doing this how do we decide to do this like um whether it is that you're ended up doing full-time or you're doing um you still have your full-time job and then you also have your art as a part-time it's it it just became like a an accidental journey (laughs) and I'm just curious how I guess it all happened but I think that's like for the next uh episode (laughs) when we get into that but um what I wanted to actually say is that it's just never too late to enter this industry Mm -hmm. enter the game to start the game so yeah yeah. well that's the thing like I I think there it's like a misconception that like you have to a go to have some sort of formal art education in order to call yourself an artist or be a professional because you know going back to what you say like we we get this question on site all the time and isn't it true that when somebody asks you that I don't know maybe maybe it's maybe it's not for you guys but when I hear that question it's like an instant like punch to the stomach that I have to say no. And then somehow like on, on, on my insides, I feel like that discredits me if I have to say no. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's just in that moment, I have to say like, Oh no, I didn't, but it's like, I I have to on the spot, justify it. Justify it. Yeah. (laughs) Because we somehow feel like, oh, like I didn't like go to post-secondary for art. And somehow like I feel like lesser than somebody who who did. And that's yeah. just not true. Like we need to not think that. Yeah. I think there's always a uh, a benefit or like a plus when your background is more than just art. You know, Mm -hmm. like Michelle, you have your nursing school background, which really help you with um, the soft skill that not a lot of people have, you know, being able to think on your feet and whatnot, which is what we do on our live event artists. And, you know, like the business side of us, Isabel, um, from our background, like it really helped with the admin process stuff you don't get to see uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) outside of art. And Mm -hmm. Like whatever you have in the past, whatever studies that you did in the past, like it's always, there's always something transferable skills that you can apply as an artist. And yeah, no, that's a good way to frame it. Like it's everything that has gotten you this far isn't a waste just because you feel like you're pivoting or whatever. You just take all that you have, um, and then you just try to apply it. And maybe it's not even a conscious application. Like, I I don't know that I would have s- said that I proactively thought about what about my business education could I bring to my art career? No, not really. But as it plays out, and then I think back, 
I don't know that I could have gotten here where I am now if I didn't um, go to business school. Like maybe, maybe I wouldn't have felt confident enough, or Mm -hmm. maybe if I didn't join like all those business clubs and like volunteer to be like the marketing coordinator that like I would feel comfortable like speaking in front of people or like go on site and and own that right like you just you just never know like thinking back like yeah that has helped me get to where I am today so I think if if someone is listening who is just you know, passionate about the art and you're, and you're learning and you're honing, um, your skills, it's not, it's never too late. Just keep working hard at it and then build the whole, build the whole foundation from there. Right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be scary. Like these are things that you learn step-by-step. So when we came into this business, we didn't think it was going to be like this, but you learn little things along the way and you just keep adding it like a little bit more responsibility here and a little bit more here. It's not all at once because that sounds really scary, but over time you start to build those skills and those skills build more skills and then you can be where you are. As long as you have like a goal of what you want to be doing, things will come naturally from there. I agree. And speaking of, um, you know keep learning we there's still a lot that we don't know like there's still we're still continuing our training our education our experimentation so it's it's never ending um journey because it's true like i just enrolled in another course this week (laughs) um (laughs) like i (laughs) it's like a we're we're constantly adding adding to it and it's like you can only get better if you work harder at it um and what did I want to say like about about like continuing education um mm-hmm. when you're like adding more skills it it's almost like it opens your eyes to um like something you didn't see before like you know, it, when you go back to like um, your first few on-site jobs, you know, you were just really trying to like get the job done and like be like do a good job, just be there, be be present and just absorb everything. And now when we go on-site, we're kind of like, it's a comfortable position that we're in now because we've been doing it for so long or we've been at so many events, but um we're still picking up like little like nuggets of like new information like oh I didn't know that I could do that oh that works better oh it's kind of nice to have my markers in a tray instead of a stand-up thing like you know we're still like picking up new things um new things on site even if we are experienced we're just still kind of piecing new things together I painted on um new paper this week for the first time like recycled yeah. cotton like I did not know how that was gonna go um mm-hmm. and then I tested that paper and it was a situation <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> um but now I now I know what that means when somebody else tells me like we've prepared um paper for you and it's recycled cotton and I will know what that means <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. constant trials and errors oh my god that's that's literally the life of any entrepreneur that's what you have to be comfortable with the trials and errors you like you don't necessarily have to ask someone you just gotta have to figure it out yourself Mm -hmm. and try it yourself yeah yeah but it's it's all good right like you learn stuff along the way and you know you have you make friends you can bounce ideas Mm-hmm. maybe things worked for you or didn't but you figure it out yeah it's part of the journey it's figureoutable <laughs> yeah um there is one thing that i uh, that we did in our company that i actually still apply today as um as a, an entrepreneur so what mike our company did that every single year we always have each of us always have to have three 
goals or project and then one of them is um has to be a learning um goal mm -hmm. so i still do that so this is on top of your bau which is the business as usual my business as usual is the live event artist everything else is like a project like when we build the fbpa that's a project when i build the engraving course that's a project now our project is the podcast so so i always have something to do if some like different goal every year and um and i try to um not try i always um have budget for learning every year i set aside a budget so whatever mm -hmm. I budget that and I, I look for like classes or something like, you know, to um, to c keep continue my artistic skills improve. So I take classes every year. So, um, yeah, I guess that's an actionable advice if you <laughs> would say so. Um, so I've been doing that every year and I think that really helps me um, being excited to always grow in my business. Yeah. So. And like it like in, enriches your um like your life too, not just mm -hmm. like your career. Cause this is something that like gives you like gives you life too on top of just doing work yeah. to earn a living. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I like that you set aside a budget for classes. It because yeah. they're an investment in yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I like that. I remember you told me that before and I was like, that's such yeah. a good way to look at it. Like, yeah, it may cost a lot, but what are you gaining from it? You you get yeah. like so much more from it. But also not just to budget your money, but also budget your time too. Because when you're taking class, you don't just take it. You also need to practice and train, you know, take your time. Usually every Monday is like the day that I don't want to do like, admin work and whatnot I just that's when I usually do my retraining taking classes visiting going back to the classes that I take that I took before um so it's your Saturday yeah. mm -hmm. that's my Saturday yeah because <laughs> like usually I'm working on Saturday Sunday and then Monday I'm like I don't want to do anything I'll just uh, I, I want like something new in my or like you know something to remind in my improvement in my learning so yeah. Yeah. The Talisa process. Yeah. <laughs> Trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's so organized. <laughs> I can't be chaotic. <laughs> the only chaotic in my life is like this uh my uh my art table. Like it's always chaotic cuz like I always want to you know, create something, um, but everything else has to be organized. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so funny you say that. Um, and I, I like, um, I embrace that for work. I'm like very messy in my personal life, <laughs> like calendar. Like I don't know what's happening tomorrow. I have no idea, but like for work, I know exactly what's happening tomorrow yeah. for work. And like people think I like am crazy uh, for having a zero inbox, but I do like I'm I'm that person who has no emails in their inbox. Like everything, every email that comes in it is either filed or automatically filed, like based on a rule. <laughs> so it's like things always have a place. And I'm I've like never lost in terms of like that admin. Um but yeah, in my like you said, the only area that's chaotic is like your 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 art your experimentation <laughs> surface. Uh, my 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 messy chaotic is like my personal calendar. <laughs> I have that too. My whole office, I'm like the closet is shoved so much stuff in there, and my office is usually like paints everywhere laying around. But you know, you come out, you show up, and everything looks clean. Like what you see behind me looks clean, but you don't see this side you don't see yes. the front side <laughs> oh we've seen it <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> oh, it's not that messy michelle <laughs> yeah. but i do oh, like God. your like medicine like cabinet like drawer it looks very like 
very vintage and apothecary. <laughs> oh, it's apothecary. I know. I love vintage medical stuff. That's yeah, what it is. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I think I guess uh, we've already in the actionable advice uh, section of this episode. Um, I would say, I guess, uh, whatever your background is, think think of any transferable skills that you feel like you have and how it can make you stand out as an artist and unique from your competition. And there's always something um, that you can apply and then you could include that as part of your process, your branding or whatnot. Um, yeah, because everyone is unique. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own strength and you want to capitalize on your strength. Yeah. And so one of our advices too is so like you said, um, continue your training and education, um, bring out what you already are strong at, highlight that, hone in on it. Um, and don't be afraid to continue to experiment. Um, and like stay curious, you know, yeah. like have have the passion and drive to look for answers yourself um research it test it out um so you're not scrambling last minute um and when a client comes at you with like what do I what can you do this um the answer shouldn't be like oh I have no idea it should be like I trust myself to figure it out yeah yeah exactly because you want to look like you want to look like an expert in front of your clients so so you want to be able to experiment, experiment as experiment as much as possible, so that you are you're always ready for the answer. You show up as the professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, do we have anything else that we want to talk about in our this topic about if you had gone to art school? I don't think. There is anything else? No? Nope. I don't think so. No. Okay. So uh next episode, we're gonna talk about something relevant to this topic. Um, uh, is how we transition from our uh I guess or from our hobby as an artist to being a business owner. So we're gonna call it from pastime to profit. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, pastime, pastime to profit or right. pastime, pastime to, to paycheck. paycheck. Yes. <laughs> perfect title yes oh, uh, my it's gonna be a continuation of everything that we said today and like how yeah, did we yeah. how do we get there how do we get to this and um and if you love this episode please um give us some rating and um and let us know your feedback we'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, questions. Um, you can DM us on um, Event Ready Podcast. Um, sorry, Event Ready Pod Instagram. Uh, please follow and let your friends know. Uh, for anyone who's in the live event industry or who are curious of how live industry, live event artistry industry is like, um, maybe someone who wants to start to get into it. Um, yeah and we are here and thank you so much for listening to this episode yeah. thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right see you next time <laughs>